Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. A farmer was resting in his paddock one day. As he lay there looking up at the sky, he noticed what he thought the clouds forming into two letters, P.C. He thought that was a message from God to preach Christ. So he tried preaching, but it was a disaster. One of his friends came up to him and said, why did you start preaching all of a sudden? He told him about the vision in the sky. And his friend suggested maybe the letters meant simply plant corn. This highlights a very common idea that God guides us subjectively by impressions and feelings on a moment-by-moment basis. We hear people saying, I felt led, God told me, God said to me, and so on. And so-called visions change. Guidance orders and leadings that we say have come from God often clash with others who have been led by God. Often it turns out that these feelings are what were convenient at the time. Many sincere believers have fallen into this error and are missing guidance altogether. They're living as victims of impulse, imagination and emotion. We must remember that our feelings are changeable, unreliable and deceptive. God has given us feelings, but He's also given us a brain and a will. And He expects us to use them all. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Well, thanks for joining us. It's Phil here along with author and pastor Ken Legg. And this week we're looking at hearing God's voice. Does he really speak to us individually? And if so, how can we know his will for our lives? And uh, Ken, you've just talked about a a common problem there. So often people say things like, God told me to do this, or I feel led of the spirit of that kind of thing. But then they change their mind. Obviously, God doesn't change his mind. So what's the story? What's going on? That's true, Phil, and and it's actually not new. If you go right the way back to Job's time, you remember those comforters, those friends of his that came to cheer him up? (laughs) So-called friends. So-called friends. We're we're friends like that. Who needs enemies? Um, But you remember they they brought their counsel. Now, one of them, Eliphaz, tried to establish what he was saying or validate it by one of these mystical experiences. You know, he said this. Let me quote to you from chapter 4 and verse 12. He said, Now a word was secretly brought to me, and my ear received a whisper of it, In disquieting thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones shake. Then a spirit passed by my face. The hair of my body stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern its appearance. A form was before my eyes. There was silence. Then I heard a voice saying, etc., etc. In other words, Phil, he was trying to validate the counsel that he had given to Job by saying, well, God came to me in this in this special way, this spectacular mm. way, yep. and uh, validate what he was saying through this experience. Yet, as we know, you know, God later rebuked Eliphaz for his words, uh, saying that they did not originate from God at all, uh, but from himself. Uh, so feelings are, are changeable. We need to understand that. They're unreliable and they can be deceptive. Uh, when a person hands over the leadership of his life to impulse, imagination or emotional feelings, yeah. then he's likely to become a, a victim of delusion. Now, God has got more reliable ways of guiding us than that. I suppose that's not the only misunderstanding people have about guidance and finding the will of God, is it? No, there's lots of misunderstandings, I think. Uh, for example, I, I'm sure you've heard of the um, the perfect will versus the permissive will theory. You know, the idea here is that God's perfect will for us is a predetermined path that may be forfeited through our disobedience or through our failure to follow through on one of the instructions in his plan. You know, for example, uh, taking a wrong job or moving to a wrong place or moving at a wrong time will take us out of the perfect will of God and we're left in his permissive will. Mm. Now, if that's the way it works, Phil, uh, how many permissive wills does God have? Because I've taken many wrong turns in my life and I don't know where I'd be now. But the, the fact is that God's purpose is for us are far greater than our mistakes or our wrong turns. Uh, you know, thank God we're in his wonderful and all-loving hands. Yeah, amen to that. And uh, the testimony of each child of God is that he, you know, God weaves and reweaves the strands of our lives to create a beautiful tapestry which one day will give praise to his glorious grace throughout the whole of eternity. We see the hand of God just keeping us back on track, bringing us back 
on target with his will. Of course, you know, we often look at the back of the tapestry where yeah. you see all the ratty bits, you know, hanging out there. But, you know, you look at the other side and God has woven that into something just amazing. Yeah, it's like looking at the characters in the Bible. I mean, I'm sure the whole thing was a maze to them, but we've got the benefit of hindsight. I mean, you take Abraham, for example. Yeah. How many wrong turns did he take? How many times did he not go forward when God said go forward? Or how many times did he go forward when God said don't? Uh, but God, you know, took his life and ultimately got him on course. And, and the, the great thing that he raised him up for, uh, he fulfilled that purpose in him, you know. And that's where there's great hope in the Bible because it's just chock-a-block full of people who stuffed it up here or there. They made the wrong decision. They did whatever it was, but God reached out to them and worked through their lives and, you know, got them back onto onto his course. There is hope for us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, there's always uh, consequences for wrong decisions. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But um, we don't just uh, throw God's perfect will on the scrap heap and we're left with some, you know, second best, third best, fourth best, keep on going down until we just end up with, you know, his 500th best yeah. or something like that. There's lots of ideas out there about what it means to hear from God, hear, you know, God's voice in our lives. and probably is rooted in the fact that there's lots of wrong ideas about God himself uh, that fuel those misconceptions about what it means there. We tend to bring him down to our own level, I guess, and think that he acts as we would do under this circumstance or other. Is that a fair comment? Yeah, I think it is. In fact, I think that's a very good point because our understanding of God shines through in this whole area of guidance. Now, I remember when I first became a Christian, uh, you know, people said to me, now, Ken, it's no longer your will. But God's will. And so I automatically thought that whatever I wanted to do was going to be diametrically opposed to mm. whatever God wanted because I'm this rebel that wants to go and do my own thing mm. and, and God wants me over here. But of course, as we go on in the Christian life, we, we learn this. You know, the Bible says that um, it's God who works in you both mm. to will and to do of his good pleasure. So I'm, I'm in sync with what God wants to do. I'm, I'm, I want to go in the direction that God wants me to go in. And that's the thing that happens out of that transformation, isn't it? That our will is aligned to God's will. And you know, sometimes it might take a little while to get there and for us to understand what that really is. And he reveals himself to us through his word. But that's what it means to become more into the likeness of Christ, doesn't it? Yeah, and of course, you know, there are times when we do walk according to the flesh. But but the general direction of our lives is that we want to walk in the Spirit. And uh, was it the psalmist says, delight yourself in the Lord and he gives you the desires of your hearts. And, yeah. and we do. We delight in God. We're a new creation and we just want what he's got for our lives. So what about another theory? Okay, um, God's will is a needle in the haystack. So you'll never find it. <laughs> you'll never find it. In fact, very few people do. It's really a reward for those who are super spiritual. They really get on their knees, they fast and they pray, and they're the ones that discover the will of God. Now, is God's will something that he's keeping from us? Is he, is he hiding it? You know, So it's so deep and so far removed from us that only a few real super spiritual people find it. No, of course not, Phil. I mean, God wants us to walk in his ways, and, and he's more anxious, if I can use that word, than we are, that we will find his will and walk in it. Mm. You know, it seems to me that a major key concerning guidance is tied up very closely to our relationship with God. God guides us, as we saw yesterday, with his eyes upon us uh, because he's deeply interested in us. He watches over us step by step, as it were, and we need to be in relationship with him, don't we? I agree, Phil, and that's why God never gives us a total summary of his will in one package. We couldn't handle it. <laughs> we couldn't handle it. Uh, yeah, well, who could handle that? The will of God is an unfolding revelation, if you like, of his plan and purpose for our lives. Let's just say we had a complete list of instructions for the rest of our lives. We'd never have a relationship with God. You know, we've got, we got the list, so why would we need to go to God and seek his face? You know, Also, if we knew, as you say, every detail of our future, we wouldn't be able to handle it. But guidance always comes in seed form. I knew that God wanted me to go and prepare for ministry, to go to Bible school. That was the next thing. Yeah. I didn't understand where he would take me from there and how my ministry would develop and what particular sort of uh, form or characteristics it would have. These are all an unfolding of his plan and his purpose that have been revealed to me as the years have gone by. And so God gives us a general sense of direction, a general call, if you like, a general sense of uh, the pathway that he's taking us along. But it's an exciting journey that we travel with him that, you know, it's just one day at a time and we hear his voice daily. Helpful advice on hearing God's voice, and we'll have more for you tomorrow. Until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage. 
God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg and details about Ken's ministry, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.